down here to highlight some of the, what I identified as some of the more frequently discussed items from the sea of notes that we have. But <clears throat> uh, I think a, a good place to start when it comes to dependencies is sort of who cares? What, what groups and communities care about this work? And then what, what types of things do they care about? Um, and how do they interpret meanings related to dependencies? And um, maybe I'd, I'd invite uh, Dwayne or, or Kate to, or, or David or whoever wants to begin to just sort of help think us, help us think that part through. Okay. Uh, like who cares? Like um, what groups and communities are interested in the dependencies work? The, the primary angle that I'm, I'm coming into this work and the primary interest that I have uh, in, in this work is to help Indeed and, and other organizations uh, I identify which are their most important dependencies to support and what are the most effective ways to support those dependencies. Um, uh, you know, looking at it from the, the lens of the open source program office, when you're, when you're handed a, an inventory list that contains tens of thousands of individual dependencies that are somewhere in your software stack, um, and you're handed with the other hand, uh, you know, a, a request from the maintainers that they get more support. It's it's very difficult to cut through. Um, maybe not to the to the top five or ten, but the middle or the or like the top fifty or maybe the top hundred dependencies that you re you really should, as an organization, be paying attention to. Um, and and figuring out what kinds of help those dependencies are, are asking for. Uh, so that you can mobilize resources from your end. That's the that's the angle that I'm I'm interested in, in or maybe the facet that I'm interested in, in viewing the problem through. And Sophia, I realized I didn't call you out specifically earlier because my Zoom window had was not big enough to show your face. So <laughs> I, see, I see that you signed in and I made my Zoom window bigger. So. Um, no, I, I actually showed up today because I had this calendar invite in three different accounts so that I was not going to miss it. So I'm here. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and, and we're glad you here, we're, you're here and you've had a lot of perspective that you've brought to the discussion. And I think what we're trying to do now is narrow down all of those perspectives so that we can drive towards accomplishing the development of specific metrics and possibly tools related to those metrics. Um, and, and so I don't know, I'm right now I'm putting this under who cares, but what, what Dwayne just shared may be, may be more around the meanings and related to dependencies, but um, what would be your take on who cares? Um, I guess I see it from a few personas. There's the developers that wonder whether or not their software or code is dependent on something to execute and run and build. So sort of the, all the software dependencies that we discussed and whether or not that actually is functional software that is not articulating well have not had enough coffee yet um the other person i would think about is security and just vulnerability assessments especially as um i am also within an ospo within google and that would be something that we care about a lot to understand what we depend on and the continued availability of that component um i would actually add one i mean it, it's a persona but a different role uh, and if you don't mind, I would put it just before the developers want to understand their dependencies. Uh, it's developers who are thinking about adding a dependency uh, or trying to make that decision. Uh, because if we don't help the people make good decisions, we're going to be endlessly stuck in the rut of trying to undo bad decisions. <laughs> and I'd, I'd, I'd rather help uh, reduce the amount of uh, problems coming in and I think that's actually a different situation because you're typically yeah no no I, I, yeah yeah okay yes yeah proactive yeah because you're typically at that point you're making a choice and so you're comparing alternatives whereas yeah. once you've made the choice it's hard to undo and often you're going to try to live with the choice because uh switching is pain <laughs> 
Yeah, I, I may be a very bad developer, but my approach is usually does this does this dependency do something I needed to do? Great, I'll go with it. Um, yeah, I usually try to do the next step, which is what are my options? Uh, now, maybe, right. maybe, yeah, I'm, uh, I, mean, I do that too, but eventually okay. I pick something without assessing it's some of the things that we're talking about. There's also the legal and compliance component. You know, we're a large company, so we always think about whether or not we're in compliant compliance with the licenses involved and that we're not going to get sued because we use something improperly. So, understanding what you depend on and then knowing what what the legal criteria are around that component. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, just as a quick uh, note, Sophie, I, you know, for, for Google, you're worried about getting sued. For small companies who might want to get bought, they're worried about M and A uh, because this is this. I've I've heard more than one story. Kate probably knows more of these than I do of M and As uh, getting torpedoed because of serious legal problems, which. You know, if, if the whole point of your company was to get bought, that's kind of a problem. <laughs> I, would, I would agree with that, too. I think that applies to any large or small company. Yeah, for different reasons, but it's the same problem. Um, Kate, uh, different perspective on that. Any anything to add? Um, I think I you know. I think just for me, it's it's sort of like okay, understand. It's it's. I think most of what's been said sort of catches the things I've been thinking about. Um, the only thing I've, I maybe can add is the fact that we need to have it to be able to be any type of metrics and so forth. You know, if just having a number isn't sufficient, we need to be able to drill, drill into it so that people can do things and action be action you know, action them. So I, you you know you have a certain set of dependencies you want to be able to understand. Okay, I'm running this container. You know what's in it. What does it depend on? You know, is something going to change? So it's a security and as well as the licensing. So it's that type of, yeah. Kind of rambling. You know, maybe a, a, a different way um, to, to say what I was saying in the beginning there is, is that a, a group of people who care about this, you might call funders. They either are coming out of um, the foundational funding space um, or they run grant programs uh, or their organizations who, you know, want to mobilize funding for um, open source dependencies or, or to help shore up dependencies that may be at perceived risk. Um, you know, all, all of them, uh, and if we step away from, from my own employer here, is look at something like the Moss program, right? Like if the Moss program has, has five requests for funding uh, in front of it um, to work on, you know, five, five different dependencies or sets of dependencies or ecosystems, being able to understand how important each of them are relative to each other um, and what the impact of that funding might be relative to um, the other grants is, is an important piece of information for them. I think that covers the the who cares unless anyone has anything to add to that. Uh, a next step might be to think about, this is, since this has become a vast space and led to many really great um, discussions, one way to focus those discussions uh, into the development of metrics and possibly tools is to think about are there, are there different focus areas right now within the working group for risk that we might want to establish. So we have a spreadsheet and that spreadsheet has focus areas. I think I think dependencies are kind of littered, not littered, littered sounds negative, but dependency oriented uh, metrics as we've started to enumerate them are in lots of different places. And it may be the case that we want to call out categories or focus areas for dependency metrics 
so that we can group them specifically and distinctly from other risk metrics and, and possibly use those focus areas to draw in additional participation to the development of metrics and tools in this space. So I just shared a link to our metrics tracking sheet in the chat. So this one here. Love of completeness. So this is what it looks like. So basically the way that we, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, Sean, I had just put. There's some placeholders. Some placeholders in there. And so um, we typically have a particular focus area and some of this can move around too, but a focus area that would be kind of the higher level categorization for a series of yet to be developed metrics. And so the, I think what Sean was bringing forward was what might be those kind of meta categories on row 71, 77, and 83 that we might think about capturing um, a set of metrics that could inform that area. Just to review, we have security, business risk, code quality, licensing, and transparency. However, I think the question of dependency can relate to any of these existing categories. And this is more about what are, you know, looking at dependencies as a, a first order category to focus on instead of having it sort of mingled in with sort of tangentially to other specific concerns. And so we might leverage existing metrics, but if we were to say these are the three focus areas that are really metrics oriented, what would we call them? I mean, I, I think to your point, Sean, there we could see dependency metrics in all of these. Yeah. So the maybe the top level is really about some element of risk assessment. If there's a, some sort of measure that if you have I guess it, it would have to be something compounded versus just a flat number because the number of dependencies doesn't necessarily dictate the level of risk of using that project or component, but mm -hmm. that it is it is related. So it could be some overall dependency metric that's associated with risk, given that this is the risk working group. But then we could have nested metrics that align to all of these sections. Like I I, I could see. I mean, we've talked about security quality licensing. I mean, all these things are coming up as other other things that could have their own measurement. Would there be possibly a dependency risk assessment for security being distinct from dependency risk metrics for licensing and sustainability? I'm just throwing ideas out. I mean, it could. I, mean, uh, I think there's some overlap. Right. Uh, uh, yeah. So should we just go with dependency risk assessment? Yeah. Can I restate, Sophia, what I what I what I what I heard when when you were saying what you were saying there, and it's going to be completely different language because I was thinking in another thread there. But we know that um, we know that a project with zero dependents that there's not uh, with zero dependents and zero installed has a risk of zero, right? Like there, if if no one's using it and no one depends on it. Uh, if it mm -hmm. if it went away, the the odds of it causing some kind of problem are are, are very difficult. Uh, the the odds are very low. We we know that if a, a project has two hundred and fifty million dependents, that that project going away, uh, the risk is, is it, there's very high risk that if that project suddenly went away or if there was a problem, that it would have a wide impact. The problem I think that you're talking about, Sophia, is that if it has a, a dependent of one that risk could still be incredibly high, right? Um, if, we're, if, if, if you only use it in one project in your organization, but that project processes all financial transactions, the, the, the chance for risk there is very high. And that, that, like, that place in the middle of, of how to assess risk for things that are just beyond um, you know, how widely is it used is, is what you're talking about when you say we, you need to have a compound metric rather than just something that's flat numbers. 
that's what I heard when you said that, or kind of between the lines. Does that sound accurate? It does. Um, and the problem with compound metrics is they would also be context dependent. <laughs> so it's, it's harder, I think, to if we want to create a singular metric that is generally applicable. I think that's always going to be tricky with something like risk. Yeah, and in fact, even finding out what depends on it is a challenging thing. You can look at places like libraries.io, which will tell you what open source libraries depend on the other open source libraries, but you won't be able to find out, well, what programs use it. That's a completely different story. And download counts are actually are remarkably not helpful because if someone sets up their test infrastructure to download a dependency every time uh, they run a test, uh, you can get huge numbers for something that isn't used very often. Uh, whereas if somebody caches things properly, you may never notice something that's widely used. That said, I mean, those are things we can measure and maybe they provide some indicators. I'm starting to, part of me is thinking, and I've, I've been other working groups advocated against sort of these comprehensive metrics and we've tried to keep them at the, you know, atomic level. So I've enumerated just listening to people, some possible atomic metrics that would ultimately not have a lot of use on their own, but if we could bring them together into a more comprehensive indicator, that would have utility. And that is turned out as a spitball. Feel free to destroy it. Yeah, and I see one challenge here. We've, we're, we're kind of mixing uh, uh, two different kinds of metrics, which I think is is probably innate. I mean, for any dependency, you have the depender and the dependee. Right. Uh, you, what's the what's the risk of the depender depending on something, and what's the you know risk of the dependee? You you, you have risks on uh, measuring on both sides here. Right. Well, I would and think we'd want to focus it on the the personas themselves. So in that case, they would be the dependees. I think if I got that. Yeah. Well, because I'm kind of thinking of the things that they depend on. And then if everyone has a metric of the things that they depend on, then it should, in theory, have all of the above versus thinking about bi-directional dependency, which I think is valid if you're thinking about, say, full system infrastructure and how everything interrelates. But if it's just an individual project, then I, I guess I would, if I had to pick one direction, I would pick the dependee. The dependee, what, what is being depended on? Yeah, what, what they need in order to run what they have. So developers, security, legal and compliance. Yeah, I have to admit, if I was going to focus on something, I'd actually focus more Unders. on the dependeur because they can make the choice. Oftentimes, the dependee, you know, it doesn't matter. Oh, you say you say it's really risky. Great, pay me. <laughs> uh, that's it. You know, or you know, I I did that twelve years ago, and I don't care anymore. Um, and so really in many ways it's the depender that can make the choice. Of what to depend on. Of, of what to depend on. Whereas the dependee may, you know, it may not, may, they may not care what the numbers say. <laughs> I, I suspect I su there's use for both, but. I, yeah, well, I suppose from a, if you take the personas from a funder perspective, they care a lot about projects that are depended on by a lot of organizations. Um, organizations consuming dependencies perhaps care more about the dependencies that they depend upon. Right. Like those two different, are those, are those two different stakeholders who care interested in those two different parts of the coin? I mean, not exclusively, but the course level they might be 
Although I, I, although I think the incentives are different, and this is usually a challenge. I mean, the one who's depend, the depender, the one who's depending on other things, you know, they have a larger system they want to get working. The, the dependee, um, you know, they presumably had some use case, but they may or may, or may not care that much about some of the other use cases. I mean, so, so is dependency risk assessment for the project depended on one focus area and dependency risk assessment for projects an organization depends on another focus area do those become those sound like the same thing I, I, wait a minute, sean are, yeah. how are these different you said depended on or depended on twice um well what i meant was opposite? like i was thinking the funder and the organization consuming dependencies as personas and i was trying to put that into words and failed <laughs> oh, I love honesty. <laughs> to, to your question that you were asking, Sean, yes, I think so. So the, the question being that there seem to be these two different personas. One is the risk associated with dependees. What is that risk? Well, this is what you and Sophia, I think, were talking about. That you you were both kind of choosing to focus on on different things. Yeah. And I think maybe a focus area for each could be okay. And the same metrics can show up in different focus areas. It's completely fine. It's just a way to to think about how to aggregate metrics that might be meaningful around a particular topic. No, okay, dependees and dependent on is the same thing. You, you mean dependers, right? Okay. I, I think what's warranted is potentially we spell it out in our definitions with the metric itself. Because if we're right, having but, enough trouble talking amongst ourselves, then I can only imagine reading this out of context will be harder. Right, but you still want to have yes. names that are as clear as possible. <laughs> Organization, well, is it organizations? Uh, clear and, and as concise as possible too yeah i know <laughs> right, right? So why, why don't say dependers I'm, I'm i'm not sure I, you, you keep avoiding that word i don't know why you're avoiding so that word. i don't know if or it's customers. clear enough well how about customers wanna, or users <laughs> well i want to i, I want to try to i want to try to say what i think you all are talking about because there, there's been so many depend asterisks now that i'm, I'm a little unsure about what where the conversation is happening what I think this is, is there are the people above me that depend on my project mm -hmm. and the projects below me that my project depends on. Are yes. those the two facets that you're talking about this? Yes. Yes. Okay. Could you say that again? I'm just gonna make a long definition and we can shorten it later. Uh, the people who depend on my project are dependents. And the projects that I depend on are my dependencies. So I was actually, I was actually taking this to mean their uh, risk for dependers are the, the risk of use. And then uh, the, the flip side of that coin is the, uh, not the risk of use, because the risk of use can be, we can look at that in different places, uh, but the uh, ways of mitigating risk in design, right? So risk is kind of inherently a, kind of a, a user issue, right? We try to avoid risk, whereas the, the designer is going to try to uh, mitigate risk in some fashion. Uh, and for me, uh, I usually for, I usually say manage risk because if you're trying risk. to eliminate risk, you're in uh, deep trouble. <laughs> okay, so and, and, no, go ahead, David. I was to say even minimizing risk may be too much because if you the best way to minimize risk is not do anything, right? <laughs> so but they think about they think about risk in different ways. Yes, agree and with for that. For me, completely. that's the that's the flip side of the coin. There, They're, those are the two different perspectives. So. If I understand, one of six and seven is upstream and the other is downstream. 
Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so which is which? Because <laughs> I always struggled to articulate that. Well, water goes downhill. So shit, upstream shit flows it, downhill is my expression. But okay. <laughs> water, water. You, water, you okay. want to All say right. water. Okay. <laughs> All the way you users. said is true too. <laughs> sorry, sorry. What, what did you say, Josh? I, I would think of it as uh, if you are depending on my project, then you are a downstream user. At least that's 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 how I've conceived of. Uh, that's how I'm familiar with with uh, downstream versus upstream. Yes. So would number seven be downstream? Well, you still uh, got since you count. They're already under six. I know. Okay. But I was going to move it, so that okay, then fine. maybe that would make more clear. So. Yeah. So for me, I would read six as downstream users. Yeah, so I would read six as downstream. Yeah. Okay. Dependency risk assessment for downstream. And then dependency risk for upstream. I know we moved beyond this already, but while Kevin was talking, I was thinking about our personas again. Um, and I didn't know if we wanted to say split up the development piece um, in that there is distinction between the engineers and the architects. But that might be too granular if we want to just bucket into those who build things and whatever role they have within it. I would think architects, at least in my long ago experience, have more time to think about and investigate depend things like dependency risk and developers are making fast decisions to meet their deadlines and maybe are less rigorous in their evaluation. Mm -hmm. And so they, they they want the same outcome, but they probably, the developer needs something quick. Yeah. But do, you, do you think that the behavior is distinct enough to have them separated in terms of persona? Because I'm assuming that would be articulated potentially in distinct kinds of metrics. But if, in your point, if they're trying to reach the same goal, then it might not make sense. We might be incurring more complexity without a lot of value add. I would, I would, I guess my first thought is that when it, when I think about things like licensing risk, I think an architect may be concerned about that. I think a developer in many cases may not know that exists, you know, unless they're well managed. Um, you know, increasingly, that's a topic. But I'm, um, Dwayne, Josh, what do you think? I think the yeah. average developer doesn't care what the license is. They just want to know if they can use it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to totally agree. Arch uh, the architects I've worked with tend to be a little more attuned to that thing. Attuned to licensing, that is. So Great. would we... I, I could add that to the notes. I didn't want to derail where we were. I just that, that came up organically. But it might be in the, uh, that might be like a developer dependency risk and architect dependency risk. I don't know if those, be, those those metrics, of course, would intersect with the upstream and downstream. However, uh, if, if they had distinct focus areas, they would also likely generate distinct metrics. Yeah, I'm confused here. Down, downstream is the folks who are on the downstream. That That's where lib years and average lib years would show, right? So uh, I, you know, I certainly, yeah, I, I, I think, think lib years are good, but I would move that to, to uh, six. Oh, shoot, we still have a confusion. Are we evaluating the risks caused by downstream or am I in the downstream? <laughs> I, I think we're assessing the risks for the people who are consuming downstream maybe just add projects to the end of that dependency risk assessment for downstream projects can, instead of four can we say in yeah all right easy change <laughs> 
so we have we have metrics that go back to the personas. I, I think developers, there's a question of if there should be a focus area related to developers or and architects. And, and I do think that those personas are distinct, but not exclusive with upstream and downstream. So I don't have a strong opinion, but I do I, think, I also, go ahead, Kate. I also think the other person that's key is security, security person. Uh, possibly also organizations as well. I think all of what do others think? Is all of this about organizations or are organization dependency risks distinct as a focus area? Organizations much, much larger than I think that we're honestly focusing on. So Dwayne, uh, I, Dwayne and Josh, would your organizations be able to you know, are these consumable ideas for focus areas that that fit the organizational needs that you have in mind and Sophia as well? In other words, does organization need to be a separate focus area or are we covering the organizational concerns in these two, in these two focus areas? I'm uh... Not sure I fully understand. I, I apologize partially. Yeah, it doesn't help that I was late. So I don't, I don't have the full context for that question. So it's, um, so I mean, organization I think isn't any more complex than you might intuitively think it is. You, you have an organization that you are working with or for and they have concerns about dependencies are there concerns about dependencies they have that don't fall into the upstream, upstream downstream, uh, possibly licensing and security categories or focus areas? Ah. Distinct considerations for your organization that aren't part of those working groups or those focus areas. So that, so there's, think, a, there's, a, there's a thing that I'm, I'm kind of wrapping my head around here and, and it is um it calls back to something so sophia said earlier about um uh, risk being context specific right like as i look through the list uh, of metrics here for the most of part these are these are all ob objective numbers right like you can you can everybody can run the same process and and look at a given dependency and say yep that that has 130 of its own dependencies. Like that is that is a fact. Whether or not it's safe to put into the code that we use to power our financial transactions, totally different question that nobody but we can answer, right? Um, you know, uh, does this library have any security vulnerabilities? Well, probably because they they all likely have at least one, unless you're really running, running bleeding edge, and even then they just haven't found it yet. Um, what's the risk of using it? Highly dependent on where, oh God, that word again. Um, highly context specific, depending on where we might be using that dependency. Um, and that, that, that question of like, what is the risk to my organization to, to using this or pulling this in? I don't think it's something that the working group can answer. I think we might be able to provide some frameworks for organizations to answer that question for themselves. Um, but anytime we find ourselves straying into questions that are not objective facts, we're probably stepping in the wrong direction. In terms of metrics definition. Yeah, so I'll, I'll make a comment just on the chaos project as a whole. We, to your point, Duane, we try to be very agnostic on the metrics. So we're value free. So we try to provide metrics that um, give you those, those numbers. Um, but yeah, you have to contextualize those to your own organization. Um, so the same holds true for the DNI metrics we've we've developed. The same holds true for the the value metrics we've developed. Um, they they only 
get meaning in local context, but we can at least help people get to that spot where they can start making those decisions. So one place where we've developed a set of just, there are a couple of examples of what we call initiatives in chaos, where we've developed a set of metrics and recognized that any one of them isn't sufficient to tell the story. And so we work to implement tools like the chaos community reports or the diversity and inclusion badging program that are are sort of more program-like and designed to integrate several metrics to provide a more comprehensive view of this, this larger integrated problem. And this may, you know, as I, I think about the things we're listing, even under downstream, I can't make a downstream risk assessment or a downstream dependency or risk assessment without most of these metrics. Uh, girls have RTI starting at 1050 in case you needed to know that. Uh, I would I would agree with the direction this is going because I was trying to think of examples of organizational specific dependency questions that aren't currently covered and I think they are all related to your existing context say the people in your organization and what they use what they work on and how that relates to what you end up using as a project. And then on the other side, your the context of your existing infrastructure environment, what's it going to be able to run on? And are there any physical dependencies that you might have in terms of what you can and cannot implement on top of your existing stack? And that's entirely context specific. So I think it, it's too it's too prescriptive in a way that we would never be able to see inside. So I, I kind of like the idea of, of discussing the applicability to an organization as you take these objective points and contextualize them as needed. And I think it, well, what you described, Matt, it seems like the rest of the project has approached, taken that approach as well. So I think, I guess I'm arguing that organizational dependencies, if that's if that's the Uber umbrella, is probably too broad for what we're trying to achieve here. I'm having trouble with the wording of 74. Yeah, uh, that would be most, those would be my words. Uh, trying, is there a dependency that seems to be losing developers that, that, that once looked okay and now is starting to look less okay? Do I have a dependence? Which is kind of uh, an upstream concern as well. Um, so, but if dependent, yeah, if dependency is becoming less well supported or not supported, you know, like, and the Node.js environment has de-supported a number of key dependencies over the last several years. Um, knowing that's happening would be helpful. So that that's like a a project health metric as an input yeah. to dependency. Kind of, and I, I think I could say from an upstream project perspective, the loss of resources, uh, loss of people interested, loss of organizational commitment can be expressed. That could be expressed as a similar concern from the other perspective, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, potentially a silly question, but is that something that's covered in any other chaos working group? Would that be something that we nest with an existing metric? So it is. So there, there are metrics along these lines that we could uh, refer to. So we have the ability in the spreadsheet now to refer to another working group's metric and say that it's a component in this focus area for us. Um, and there are, there are definitely metrics like elephant factor, bus factor, um, 
Well, we have like just but in there's a whole working group whole for host. the ev ev evolution yeah. of projects, like the growth, maturity, and decline of projects that can look at things like you know issue resolution time, right? Which might give you indicators that something's up. Yeah, contributors. Yeah, yeah. Pull request okay. responsiveness and new contributors are two. Of, they integrate several metrics, and they're they're the most asked for kinds of reports that we get. I actually think there's going to be a fair amount of overlap from the evolution working group and the uh, the number seven uh, upstream projects focus area. I think there's probably going to be a lot of overlap between the two. Yeah, I think there may be. Yeah, I think there could be a value overlap there because certainly in upstream projects, there's a if you become large enough, you develop funding dependencies that are either tied to organizational support or external funding. I don't, know. I don't know if do we do we want to we have a uh, five minutes left in the scheduled call. How do we want to use that time if we go back to our agenda of um, the who cares? Um, is there a minimum viable product for dependency metrics might be a good a good question might be well, i think one of the things that i could do as an action item is from the the who cares part and then what was jotted down in the spreadsheet is try to organize that a little bit just in a like in a way that to sophia's point earlier that we can all articulate it clearly so that others <laughs> can understand what we're trying to articulate. Um, so maybe trying to just bring this discussion together so that in two weeks, we have something to go off of. Yeah, I, 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 having uh, struggling over this particular organization, maybe it'd be better to just kind of identify metrics that re are reasonable and then back up to what are the what what do they help us determine instead of trying to force an organization structure upon it? We we could do that too. Yep. I even think just the two focus areas of the upstream and the downstream might might be at least help. They're so broad <laughs> that that's right. okay. And really, yeah. anything that measures a project is probably a relevant metric from the point of view of someone who consumes that project. You know, because you know, I want to know the risks of using this project. How do I evaluate a project? Well, here's a very long list. <laughs> well, I think it's it's only appropriate that the dependency metrics would be dependent on other metrics in chaos working groups. <laughs> <laughs> on a very meta level. It's true. It's yeah. true. <laughs> yeah, but, but maybe this attempt to separate the dependent and dependees, I think there is that is certainly true. But indeed, I think a lot of the things you can measure for a project are also things you can measure for yourself and for every project you depend on and really transitively. Mm -hmm. So maybe yeah. that we, we started down that path. I think there is a pony in there, but I, I think there's probably a lot of metrics where it's the same, it has uses in both sides. Yeah, the other thing I'm sort of thinking is that the way open source is um, constructed and things are done from the build infrastructure and so forth, it's much easier to understand who you depend on rather than to understand who depends on you. Agree. In the sense I, that I, um, things like pop counts sometimes help, but at the end of the day, um, it's it's far more ambiguous as to know if people are going to be depending on you or not. But I, I, I I'm not sure I agree with that because I, I think if okay. I'm faced with pushing out a breaking change, knowing how okay. many people might get broken as a result of that change is an important question. I think it's a oh, smaller. It, it's very you, it's a very much important question. I'm not saying the question is important. I'm just saying that the infrastructure and the information that we can mine to get to those dependencies is lacking. Yeah. Breaking right. changes are often identified by people screaming. This, <laughs> this <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, though, was, was the original problem that Libraries.io sought to solve was to help people figure out who was using their stuff. Um, mm -hmm. not, just so that, not just so that they could... Um, figure out who's going to get broken by breaking changes, but also so they can figure out 
like you know should they be charging for what and how uh and it subsequently i know for sure the same problem that depth cloud is set, set out to, to to solve figuring out who's using my stuff right josh what are your thoughts there So, the, the thoughts on on a uh, just the depend you know the original purpose of libraries.io and understanding dependencies in each direction. Um, yeah, I, I mean certainly figuring out who was using what was was sort of was was a part of it. Um, I confess I haven't. <laughs> I was advisor to the project, but it's been a while since I've been in sync with them, so I. I, I uh, don't necessarily even trust my memory <laughs> or what I claim that that project would be about right now. Yeah. Um, but I, but I think that that was certainly was, was part of it. Yeah. Um, we are, we're at time. Is there anyone who wants to add anything or should we um, thank each other for an organizing discussion? Uh, of many of the things that we've talked about and thank Matt for taking the action item to try to cohere a little bit, cohere this a little bit more for a subsequent discussion. All right, I'll try. Or is there more we should discuss right now? I'm afraid I do need to drop. So. Yep, I'm good. Okay. All right. Um, thank you, Sean. Can I briefly say that uh, there, this may not be the best time for Kate, well, for a number, for a couple of people um, on the call. So uh, I will send 